Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about OneDrive. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about what you use OneDrive for, how to access it, and some tips and tricks along the way. Before we get started, here's a word from this week's sponsor, PlumSale. With OneDrive and business, PlumSale public forms, you can take the data collection and file storage to the next level and automate storing forms attachments. PlumSale Forms makes it a breeze to start with an automated data collection as they offer an extensive library of ready-to-go form templates from registrations and surveys to various orders and application forms. The best part? They are customizable. Creating a new form from scratch is also a piece of cake with a handy drag-and-drop designer. You can simply drag-and-drop the fields, adjusting their size and settings as desired. Everything is intuitively done. With PlumSale, create multiple step forms, organizing questions into logical sections, capturing repeating data effortlessly in a structured form with data table controls. Enable users to leave handwritten notes, signatures, attach files, and access many more advanced features straight out of the box. Thanks to the user-friendly drag and drop designer, building any forms is a cinch. Alternatively, you can kickstart your form creation with one of the ready-to-go templates from PlumSale's library, such as registrations, feedback and surveys, reservations, orders, applications. The best part, they're all customizable. With PlumSell Forms Connector for Power Automate, you can automatically store form attachments to OneDrive for business. Upon each form submission, a flow is triggered downloading the attachment and saving it to the de des designated folder in OneDrive for business. Give PlumSell Online Forms a try now. They offer a free plan. The link is down below. And if you need more submissions, grab your 10% off coupon um, Dougie for the entire first year. Go and check that out. The link is in the description below. So most of the licenses in Microsoft 365 come with a OneDrive subscription. Now, OneDrive is essentially your personal document storage space. Now, if you're a bit confused about where to store your documents, I do have a separate video which goes into all the details about when you should use OneDrive versus SharePoint versus Teams. So go and check that video out if you haven't done already. But essentially, OneDrive is your personal document storage space. And we do advise that people take the most out of this because everybody gets up to a terabyte of storage space. It's really easy to access OneDrive. Now, we can do this by... Uh, going to office.com, then clicking the app launcher, and then clicking on OneDrive. Now, this will take me into my own OneDrive area. A lot of people get confused with OneDrive and think that it's only their, uh, their own documents and they can't share them out. But you can. By default, obviously, the documents are just for you, but you can share them out with the people if you wanted to. It's really simple to use. So um, from the home screen, you can see any documents you've recently viewed. My files is any files or folders you've previously created. Um, and we can add new files and folders by clicking the add button. And then you can see I can create new folders. I can create new Word documents, Excel, um, uh, or I can actually drag and drop files and folders directly into here as well from File Explorer if I wanted to upload some more. But essentially, I want to go into a bit more about kind of some of the other features you might not necessarily know about OneDrive. Um, there's a really good feature here for shared because you can see any documents that have been shared with you as a list of documents, but also you can see documents that you've previously shared out. So this gives you two things. One is that, say for example, if documents have been shared with you, say Joe Bloggs on your team has shared this document with you, you uh, and you can't find it, you can go into this area and find every document that's ever been shared with you. Or if you wanted to just double check documents that have been shared by you, I can see here, for example, this sponsorship packages um, PDF that I've shared out to people. But actually, if I wanted to, I could go back in and revoke that so I could actually make sure um, by managing the access that nobody has access to this. So it's a good way of just double checking who has access to your documents and revoking them if you wanted to. You can also choose to favorite documents as well. So if you favorited any documents, you'll see a list of documents that you've previously favorited in here. Obviously, I'm just using a bit of a dummy demo example area here, so I haven't got any favorites or there's not much documents in here anyway. Um, then we've got the recycle bin. So this is anything that you've previously deleted. So say, for example, if I just go back to my files area here and let's just create a brand new document, click on Word, uh, and this is just literally just to create a dummy document that we can delete and I can show you how this works. So um, just click on close this and just put any old text into here. And I'm going to change its name. I'll just call this Dougie's Doc, like so. Uh, and then I'm going to come out of this 
um, and go back into my area here. Now I can see this document if I select it and then click on uh, the delete option. I do get a confirmation just say, are you sure you want to send this to a recycle bin? But what we're saying is that this document, in fact, actually, um, I've had it open too quickly, so I can't actually delete this one. Um, maybe let's um, delete this attachments folder. Um, so this will then disappear, but then it will reappear in the recycle bin area. I can see that it was deleted and it roughly stays in here for about 30 days. And then after that, it will then go into this second stage recycle bin and it'll stay there for another roughly 30 days. And we can always go back in that period and select it and restore it. Now, I always recommend that people go and check um, their recycle bins um, if they've deleted a document from their OneDrive rather than going to their IT team and asking to have it restored because it's much easier to get it back from here than it is anywhere else. I can also choose to browse files by other people that they've created and also any files that have come from Teams meetings that I've been a member of. I've also got this quick access area here. So these are SharePoint sites. So on some of my other videos, you might have seen that I've created some of these um, other intranet sites, but I can access the documents from there as well, really simply and easily from my OneDrive. So OneDrive is providing me this kind of one-stop shop of how I get in to view um, all the files that I've previously been working with. So this is essentially the, the, the kind of the web view, um, if you like. Um, of my OneDrive, but also you can access OneDrive from your own um, computer as well. And you might have already seen it installed on your computer by going into File Explorer. And you'll see that you'll have OneDrive on the left-hand side, but it's exactly the same documents. Um, and it's actually something that's worth kind of repeating because actually some people get a bit confused about when they're syncing their documents and where they have documents stored. And actually OneDrive in itself, um, it, it doesn't make any difference whether you're looking at it through a browser or through the app on File Explorer because it's the same documents. If you delete it in one place, it'll delete it in the other. And sometimes people get a bit tripped up by that. Um, but essentially there's loads of great features of OneDrive. So I say it's your personal document storage space. Um, once you've got a document in here, you know, you can um, work on it directly from inside of OneDrive, or if you wanted to, you can share this with people by clicking on that share button across the top, and this will bring up the share option. Now you can, again, you can do the, exactly the same process inside of File Explorer, but actually you just need to right click on the document and click on share, but it brings up the same screen. From here, we can then choose um, whether we want people to edit it, whether they can view it, or they can just add review options. You can also go into more advanced options in here and you can see that there's four different levels of sharing that you can do from OneDrive. The first is anyone, which means anyone with a link, um, they don't have to sign in. It's essentially anyone in the world. They don't have to have a Microsoft 365 license. They don't have to have access to your Microsoft tenant. That link will work for anyone. So quite often that is locked down, but when people start having external access, they quite often start by opening up OneDrive before SharePoint and Teams to mitigate kind of people like having access to large volumes of documents externally, but maybe just applying it just to a couple of different individual employees, OneDrive. Um, we could just say people within, and now <laughs> this is a little bit misleading because actually we're, we're talking about my kind of OneDrive here now. So people inside of my kind of OneDrive, people with existing access, if I've already given them access to a file or folder, um, they would already have access or people I specifically choose. But I'm just going to select on anyone so anyone can use this particular link. I could, if I wanted to, type in someone's name, if I want to send them an email with a message and then click on send, or I could just click on the copy link that's giving me the link and I can go and paste that then into, say, an instant message, um, a, a chat, Teams message, a WhatsApp, an email. I could send that and then anyone who has that link would be able to open that document. So that's the sharing option. Um, one final thing I just wanted to kind of talk about as well is um, we can also move documents out of OneDrive into SharePoint. So something that is quite often quite common is that you start off working with OneDrive, you're building documents that are only really something that you are working on, but then you need to transition them into a platform uh, where everybody else or your team members have access to. And that might be moving into a SharePoint team site, so accessible inside of Microsoft Teams, or it might be to a SharePoint communication site, which is like Viva Connections or your kind of intranet. Um, it's really simple to do that. And essentially the, the move to and copy to give you the same functionality, but the only difference is move to is like cut and paste where we're removing it from its current location 
and then moving it to a brand new location. Whereas copy to is like copy and paste. We're copying that file and we're putting a copy of it somewhere else. So say for example, if you wanted to keep the original here, but you're then moving it or you're copying it into a new location and you want to keep that there, you could use a copy to function. Um, so I'm going to click on copy to. And then this is going to open up an area where I can choose where I want to move this to. So I can see all the different places that I can access. So I click on more places here and I can see all the different libraries. So I've got my intranets, I've got some of my other SharePoint sites like the heart, leadership updates, things like that. So I'm going to move it into my intranet site and um, you can see here, this is the documents inside of here. So I can see all the different contracts I've previously had in here. So maybe I'm going to copy my document in here. So once I've clicked on copy, you can see down here, it's making that copy, it's creating it and putting it into the document. And then by clicking on that link, I can actually, without leaving OneDrive, see this set of documents inside of here. Or I could go into my SharePoint site through the SharePoint interface. And then again, here, same set of documents. And I can see that Dougie's doc that I've just copied from my OneDrive into my SharePoint site. So that's nice and simple, really easy to use. As I say, OneDrive is a brilliant tool. Um, I, I advocate everyone to use it. If you're considering when to use OneDrive, when to use SharePoint, when to use Teams, again, as I say, I have a separate video about that. So go and check out that video for a bit more detail about the other document storage areas of Microsoft 365. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you need any help with SharePoint and you're looking for um, a SharePoint or a Microsoft 365 consultant, my contact details are in the description of the video and as a pinned comment below. Um, stick around for one final word from this week's sponsor, Plum Sale. Let's give a quick shout out to our video sponsor again. Their tools go beyond an online form builder. Plum Sale provides a range of comprehensive tools for automated document creation, customizing SharePoint list forms, a ticketing system, and other solutions for enhancing your Microsoft 365 and SharePoint. Head over to their site. You'll find the link down below the video. And don't forget to grab your 10% off coupon. Use Dougie for a whole year's subscription to any of their products to get your 10% off.